Hi and welcome to another of the DTA screencasts. In this session we're going to be looking at transfer. It is a revision session so there's going to be some questions quite early on. Uh, let's get started. So first and foremost, write down the different types of transfer, pause the screencast and then we'll have a look at the answers. Okay, so the different types of transfer positive, negative, proactive, retroactive and bilateral. That's fine. You'll probably be able to remember those. But if you're asked what transfer is, would you be able to give an answer? So again, pause it. See what you think transfer actually is. Okay. So if we are trying to establish what it is, it's the effect or the influence that one skill has on the learning performance of another skill. Notice here that it's not directional, it doesn't say a positive or negative, it just says that it has an effect. And that's a very important point to note. So the other thing is this, uh, the psychologist called Schmidt, so if we've got the 10 marker, he said that no learning takes place without transfer. It's a really good sentence to put in there, so it shows the examiner you've, you've got a breadth of knowledge as well as uh, anything else. So what he suggested with it in the early years, rarely learning, uh, you rarely learn new skills from scratch. Patterns of movements are born out of previous experiences. And it's this fundamental movement skills. Okay, so there in essence is your background. Let's quickly go through each one of the different types of transfer. Positive, obviously when one skill uh, enhances the learning uh, of another. And this one here, we've got the cricket bowling and the javelin. Negative, the perfect example that everybody uses is the wrist on this one. So you're not able to transfer the wrist action of tennis to that of badminton. It has a negative impact on the learning. Proactive is just where you've had a previously learnt skill and it's supporting the development of a new skill. Retroactive is the other way. So you've got this new skill and it actually now helps a previously learned skill. So after carrying out skills in, in volleyball, you might think about your throwing technique and therefore it changes. And then bilateral, this is that capacity to transfer from one limb to another. But the key thing is you make sure you give examples. Okay, so let's uh, look at some questions then. So this first one here, transfer of learning has a positive effect on the performance of a skill. So uh, what is transfer of learning? in physical education or sport? Very low level uh, question. So let's very quickly look at the answer. All right, so it's the effect, the influence that one skill has on the learning performing of another skill. Fine, no problem at all. So let's look at another question. This one here, uh, slightly different. This one, use a practical example to explain bilateral transfer. Obvious thing that we're looking at here is the practical example. So if you want to pause it, have a go at the question and we can look at the answer. All right, so this one here, the transfer of learning performing from one limb uh, side of the body to another, uh, which explains what bilateral transfer is. And within the example, dribbling uh, in the right hand in basketball, then doing exactly the same with the left hand. Really, really straightforward. Okay, so this question is a little bit more complex. Uh, explain how performers and teachers can ensure that positive transfer occurs between physical skills. So what strategies would a teacher or a coach come up with to make sure that you can transfer from one skill to another? So again, pause the screencast, have a go at the question, and then we'll look at the answer. All right, so this might be a, uh, an answer that you would have come up with, hopefully a better one, but we'll have a look at it anyway, see what the positives are. Positive transfer is where one skill helps the learning of another, that's correct. You can ensure this by making the learner the learned skill match the one that you're going to do. Fine, yeah, I agree with that. And then, for example, if you do a smash in Bampton, this will be similar to the overhead throw in cricket. Again, I agree with that, but I think we can go with the better answers of where we're going to guarantee marks. This one, you could argue, is not the best of answers. So let's have a look at what we've got here. So ensuring similar skills, fine, no problem at all. But here, look, emphasis on the transferable element making sure that the person who's actually performing the skill has been linked to the previous skill. So let's take uh, the javelin and uh, the bowling action in cricket. That was one we used earlier. So if you say to somebody as they're trying to learn the javelin, think about the same action 
from behind and then past your ear and then, and then forwards the same as you would do within cricket and bowling it allows them to have that kinesthesis it allows them to have that mental picture of what the action is supposed to look like and therefore enable them to increase the ability of transfer closer the SR bond is to the old skill the greater the likelihood of transfer so um, echoing this point here and then lastly this one here positive reinforcement will encourage transfer so as soon as you see the new skill occurring in the same format that you wanted it to in other words the previous skill you must encourage that and that will ensure according to the mark scheme that positive transfer will occur question here then transfer of learning is the influence of one skill on another yep what is negative transfer and then give a practical example okay again if you want to pause the screencast okay so negative transfer is uh, this is where one skill uh, inhibits the ability to learn a new skill and the example that they give there is the basketball player starts to dribble the ball when playing netball that'd be interesting to see or you've got this one the the idea of the loose wrist there's no surprise that one's come back up used in badminton uh, against tennis okay so that's fine low level let's move on then why might negative transfer occur pause the screencast see if you can write down some notes see what you think okay so for this one what I want you to do then is think about what allows positive transfer to occur and then link it across to negative so ensuring that there is a similar skill involved in the drill but here the performer doesn't really understand the requirements of the task a greater link here emphasis on transferable element teacher doesn't draw the attention to any of the differences as I mentioned before so if you do it's obviously going to allow that but if you don't another one here positive reinforcement will encourage transfer so we're looking at positive reinforcement here lack of motivation or arousal so you can see how these are slightly linked can't you so the idea behind this question is that if you can identify the positive sides of one you can then also to a certain extent look at the negative occurrences in the other okay so the final 10 marker then using practical examples explain the effect of transfer on the learning of movement skills so what I suggest you would have done is probably write out a plan with an introduction you'll identify each one of these positive negative etc you'll also come up with practical examples and a conclusion Yahoo but what's the problem here is the fact that everybody's going to be doing that so how is yours going to guarantee that you access the 10 marks how are you going to get that higher level those higher order answers and we do that by making sure that we've got a technical vocabulary so let's quickly have a look at that so these are the main components we need for our 10 marker and let's have a look at the introduction so most people will turn around and say transfer is and then give uh, their definition of what transfer is but why not think back to what Schmidt said so it can be argued that all learning is some form of transfer or think of another sentence according to Schmidt all forms of learning are transfer and by putting this in the introduction we're showing the examiner that we understand what the concept of transfer actually is talking about as opposed to just writing out a definition and then saying I'm going to explain using practical examples each one of the forms of transfer it's just not as effective so let's look at one or two of the uh, different components so for positive transfer you might say increases ability to perform skill right yeah but why can't we turn around and say this increases the stimulus response bond alongside this so that we're showing that we understand this concept here using technical vocabulary negative performer can mix up the skills right yeah it's a bit vague though isn't it so performer can confuse subroutines and then last but not least I think in the conclusion if you've not already mentioned all the points that you need here's where you can get them in so varied practice is absolutely essential for transfer to take place say that in this conclusion and that way we're 
giving ourselves more of an opportunity to add those marks in. So don't be afraid of making sure that the introduction and the conclusion are in there and they're actually part of your plan. Even if you just write the word introduction, write the word conclusion, it will give you that um, structure that you need hopefully to achieve those higher marks. Okay, uh, that's the end of the screencast and hopefully that will have cleared up a few points. Uh, thank you very much.